Los Angeles. I'm Tavis Smiley. If you happen to be channel surfing the bass fishing shows, you might have come across this. That's a big one here. professional bass angler Clifton Blanchett really in a big one. Born to sharecroppers in Forest City, Arkansas, Clifton has been fishing since he could walk. Four years ago he launched his professional angling career. In 2000 he became the first African American to compete in the Walmart FLW Tour, one of the sport's most elite circuits. Today Blanchett still competes professionally but without a corporate sponsor. He's at a severe disadvantage obviously and joins us today in our studios here in Los Angeles. Clifton Blanchett, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Travis. How you been, man? Hey, fine, fine. Appreciate you having me on the show. My pleasure. You've been fishing since you could walk. What in the world was it about <laughs> fishing that got you into it at such an early age? Well, you know, I, I started fishing. Uh, my aunt took me fishing first. I was around about six or seven years old when she took me fishing. And, you know, we had the old cane pole sitting on the bucket on the side of this pond. Now, my aunt was from Little Rock, Arkansas. And, of course, I lived in Forest City really out in Cote, Arkansas, which is out in the country, about another 10 miles out. And that was a little pond that uh, I used to walk by going to school every day, and I never fished it. And, and we went fishing in this pond and caught some nice little bluegill, little brim, some people call it down south, and uh, went home and fried them up and ate them. And then over the years, I kept seeing this pond. And I never really fished back there anymore because I started fishing in different bodies of water, more exciting, bigger bodies of water. And then I got realized what that pond really was. It was. In down south, you have septic tanks. And when you install a tank, you have the water that runs off into some type of body of water. Well, this was the runoff water for the <laughs> septic tank. And of course, you know, I wasn't environmentally conscious, neither were they back in those days. I see. And so I uh, went off in there, and that was, come to find out that was a uh, runoff pool for a lot of the septic tanks when I first started fishing. <laughs> but, you know, unfortunately, we didn't eat a lot of those fish out of there. I'm so. glad you didn't eat the video. <laughs> Nowadays, given what you do, it takes money, it takes a sponsor to do it successfully uh, and to do it long term, but I imagine it didn't take a whole lot of money to go fishing back then. No, back in those days, you know, you can go and cut a cane pole, you know, down south, you know, the cane grows down on, on the bayou, and uh, you can go down and cut a cane pole and put a string on it and go out and fish. You know, back in those days, we used a lot of twine, you know, that we didn't even have the day where we had on the film, and now you have all this high-tech and synthetic lines that we use today for sensitivity. You know, there we just take a piece of twine, a little bit of a cork, uh, either sometimes just take a little piece of wood and let it, as long as it float and the hook stuck on it, you know, you put a bait on it and go fishing. Dig some worms up and you're fishing, you know, so it didn't cost anything. Brothers always find a way to make do. <laughs> yeah. But let, let, let me be honest with you, Clifton. When, when, I, when I think of these bass fishing shows, or for that matter, any kind of fishing show, I think of some good old white boys from down south. And to see you sitting in front of me with your black self <laughs> uh, just doesn't fit the picture that I have when I think of fishing on television on a professional tour. Well, you know, it's the same it's the same image that I had as a kid growing up. You know, I, I grew up watching those shows and guys like Bill Dance and Hank Parker, uh, some of the, the legends in this sport. Uh, I really still did not let that deter me from wanting to pursue that as a goal. What's it like being the only brother on the tour? Well, it's lonely, first of all. Uh, a lot of days you on the road traveling. I travel roughly about 250 days a year. Uh, I'm normally in a small town. Uh, there aren't that many African Americans in that town. But I, I have to say that despite the loneliness, it's been fun. You know, uh, the camaraderie from the other anglers have been very supportive. Uh, I haven't run into any major racial incidents or anything of that nature. You know, I've stayed in people's homes in Mississippi. I've lived, stayed with guys in Alabama. You know, I run into guys at a service station, and uh, they look at me as a bass fisherman, not as a black person. Uh, so they don't necessarily, you know, they that it over it transcends a lot of those racial barriers that one might think. One of the stories that sticks out in my mind. I stopped one day in Jackson, coming back from Biloxi. I stopped at a catfish place. You know, of course, being from the south, you know, you see that catfish place. Gotta stop. You gotta stop. <laughs> so so, so I stop. went in there and uh, and it was on a Sunday morning, and uh, people were just coming back, coming in from church, and most of the people there. Well, everyone that was white, except for a few people in the back that was cooking, that was black. And, of course, uh, I sat down to eat, and I was standing in line. The people saw my truck out front in my boat. They said, you're a professional bass fisherman. I said, yes, I am. 
They said, well, you know, they got to talk to him a little bit, find out where I was going, where I've been. They said, you know, instead of you sitting by yourself, come eat with us. So they invited me to sit down with their family. You know, here I was, you know, sitting down in Mississippi, in Jackson, Mississippi, at a white family's table eating, all because of the fact that they looked at me as a professional bass fisherman, not as a black man. And I, and I really applaud the people that I run into on the trail with that. What have been the obstacles you face in finding a sponsor? Well, the, the, the obstacle has been uh, primarily sponsors. They look at your fact that, okay, you need to win a tournament, for example. And uh, you have two major circuits out there. You have the Walmart FLW circuit, and you have the Bassmaster circuit, similar to a NASCAR. And both of them are very lucrative tournaments. All right, well, I haven't won a tournament. But, of course, when you're competing against a guy that competes full-time, that does nothing but fish, and have unlimited resources, it's very hard to, to beat a hundred or so of those guys when you're fishing with limited resources. It's a catch-22. It's a catch-22. You got to win, but you ain't right. got the resources. Exactly. To so, you know, they said, well, you need to win. Well, okay, how do I win if I don't have the resources to win? Of course, you look at my background, I am a winner. I've won in a lot of different sports. So, I'm just basically asking a, a sponsor to take a look at, here's a person who's a winner and invest in me and give me an opportunity so I can win. You said that bass fishing can be very lucrative. What do you mean when you say very lucrative? Well, for example, uh, we just had a, a, a Ranger M1 tournament. Uh, uh, the, win the winner won $700,000 first place. What? $700,000. For catching some fish? For catching fish. <laughs> the kind of money that exists in this sport. I quit. $700,000. I quit. NPR. For four days of work. <laughs> NPR, consider this my resignation. <laughs> I'm going bass for fishing. Four days of work, $700,000. Guys just wanted to try. God. Travel. Last week, and so there's major mu bucks involved in it, for, and it's getting larger. ESPN just recently bought out BASS, which is the world's largest bass fishing organization. So now you have a media that can now bring the helicopters and the equipment necessary to bring bass fishing live to you in your living room, which opens the door for sponsors big time. Okay. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? The biggest fish, I caught the biggest fish of the tournament that was, that was aired on ESPN on uh, January the 12th through and 18th. That was a 5.4-pound uh, smallmouth. Now, smallmouth is, is, a, is a, far, a little bit smaller species of the black bass family because you have the largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass uh, that makes up the, in, uh, the Guadalupe bass, which is some people call the peacock bass down in Central America, that makes up the bass family. But the smallmouth normally isn't that big, but a 5.4 pound smallmouth is a large fish. So that would be my largest smallmouth fish. My largest largemouth would be about a 10 pounder. Forgive my, uh, forgive my stupidity. Did you eat it? No, I didn't. I, we, we, we normally, <laughs> a lot of times, you know, we, we practice, in a tournament situation, we practice catch and release. Right. But a lot of times, uh, when I'm out fishing, I do harvest a few bass. Yeah. That's what we call it. And, uh, <laughs> harvest a few bass. So uh, just to maintain the uh, the gene pool, you know, a lot of times when we catch a big one like that, we let them go back. That, that, that's like that's, that's conservation. You know? That's like a yeah, conservation for you. <laughs> it's a sin for most Negroes. You catch a well, fish that big and put it back. Well, that's true. But you know, the thing that what I try to do, what I want to help a lot of people do, is learn how to catch fish so they can't eat them. Uh, because a lot of times, from a tournament standpoint, we don't. Because because, you know, we get paid to catch fish. And if we were to eat everything we catch, we can deplete a lake in a matter of a few years. Especially if you're a professional. Exactly. Like Clifton yeah. Blanchett. Exactly. Right. I ain't mad at you. So what are your goals as a professional angler? Well, my goal is to uh, qualify for the Bassmasters Classic, which is the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Now, that's where you take the top 45 anglers in the, in the world and you compete for $100,000 to $200,000 first place prize and a million dollars in endorsements for that entire year. Ooh. So that is so it is it is the covenant prize of a professional angler. I would also like to be able to do a lot of public speaking and go out into communities when I'm not fishing and work with inner city kids, uh, urban kids, talk to them about, you know, gun safety, fishing, water safety, uh, just life in general do some motivational speaking because you know I have truly been blessed in life and I really want to uh, just help and give back when I'm not out on the tournament circuit fishing.
Well, I must tell you, I had no idea that I would enjoy a conversation so much with a brother <laughs> about bass fishing. I've enjoyed this so much, Clifton Blanchett. I hope you find that sponsor. I pray that you do. Clifton Blanchett is a professional bass angler and on the verge of reeling in the big one. I feel it. He's with me today in our Los Angeles studio. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. To listen to this show or past shows, you can visit npr.org. For more on what I'm doing, you can always hit TavisTalks.com. I'm Tavis Smiley. This is NPR.